Brain abscesses are focal infections of the central nervous system, representing approximately 8% of all intracranial space-occupying lesions. They are more commonly observed in men between the ages of 30 and 50 and can have a mortality rate as high as 53%. The incidence of brain abscesses in the United States range from 0.3 to 1.3 cases per 100,000 person years. Etiology The most frequently identified pathogens in brain abscesses are Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus viridans. Anaerobic microorganisms are present in up to 40% of cases, while enteric gram-negative bacilli are found in up to 33% of cases. The use of immunosuppressants and broad-spectrum antibiotics has led to an increase in fungal-related brain abscesses, which now account for about 1% of cases. Infections caused by nocardia species are rare, occurring in fewer than 1% of cases, and can manifest as single central nervous system lesions or as part of a more widespread infection. Pathophysiology Brain abscesses develop through three primary mechanisms. The first involves the inoculation of microorganisms from the skin, often due to head trauma or neurosurgical procedures. The second mechanism is the spread of bacteria from nearby areas, such as in cases of mastoiditis, otitis media, or sinusitis. The third mechanism is hematogenous spread from distant sites, which can occur with conditions like bacterial endocarditis, lung abscesses, or skin and dental infections. Damage to the blood-brain barrier, which can result from brain trauma or neurosurgical interventions, makes the brain more susceptible to bacterial infection. Animal studies have shown that as few as 102 colony-forming units of a single microorganism can initiate a brain abscess. The development of a brain abscess occurs in four stages. The first stage, early cerebritis, is characterized by the infiltration of neutrophils, plasma cells, and mononuclear cells around blood vessels. In the late cerebritis stage, macrophages and fibroblasts also infiltrate the area. The third stage, early capsule formation, involves the beginning of a fibrous capsule around the abscess. The final stage, late capsule formation, sees the capsule becoming thicker and more defined. Under microscopic examination, five main areas are typically observed. The necrotic center is the core of the abscess, filled with dead tissue. Surrounding this is the inflammatory cell area, where white blood cells are actively fighting the infection. The capsule, a fibrous layer, helps contain the infection. The neovascularization area contains new blood vessels that supply nutrients to the abscess. Finally, astroliosis and paralesional edema represent areas of swelling and scarring around the abscess. Symptoms. The most common symptoms of brain abscesses include headache, 69%, fever, 53%, focal neurological deficits, 48%, impaired consciousness, 48%, nausea and vomiting, 47%, papilledema, 35%, meningeal signs, 32%, and seizures, 25%. Diagnosis. Diagnosis begins with a detailed clinical history and physical examination to identify predisposing factors. Neuroimaging and laboratory studies are essential for confirming the diagnosis. A lumbar puncture and cerebrospinal fluid analysis may be performed if the abscess ruptures into the ventricles or if meningitis is suspected. However, this procedure carries a high risk of brain herniation and often yields negative culture results. If a lumbar puncture is considered, neuroimaging must first be conducted to rule out elevated intracranial pressure. Stereotactic aspiration is an alternative that allows for microbiological studies and can also serve as a therapeutic intervention. Blood tests often reveal elevated erythrocyte sedimentation rate, 72%, leukocytosis, 60%, elevated C-reactive protein levels, 60%, and positive blood cultures, 28%. Cerebrospinal fluid analysis typically shows pleocytosis, 71%, elevated protein levels, 51%, and positive cultures, 24%. Neuroimaging is critical for identifying the location, size, and characteristics of the abscess. 
Contrast-enhanced head CT scans typically show a hypodense nucleus surrounded by a thin contrast-enhancing ring and paralesional edema in up to 85% of cases. Contrast-enhanced brain MRI is the preferred imaging modality due to its high sensitivity and specificity. It can detect early cerebritis, the spread of infection into the ventricles and subarachnoid space, and satellite lesions. On T1, weighted MRI sequences, a hypo-intense lesion surrounded by an iso-intense or slightly hyperintense halo is observed with contrast enhancement in the halo. On T2, weighted flare sequences, paralesional edema appears hyperintense and the capsule appears as a hypo-intense halo due to paramagnetic oxygen. Diffusion-weighted imaging, DWI, can differentiate pus in a brain abscess from cell debris and tumor necrosis, with pus appearing hyperintense due to restricted water molecule movement. Treatment Brain abscesses are typically treated with a combination of surgery and antibiotics. Surgery may involve drainage, excision, or stereotactic aspiration, while antibiotics can be administered orally, intravenously, or intrathecally. Non-surgical treatment may be considered for patients with multiple brain abscesses less than 1.5 cm in diameter. A single lesion less than 1.5 cm, lesions in critical brain areas, or concurrent infections such as meningitis or appendicitis. Empirical antibiotic therapy should be initiated as soon as possible. The choice of antibiotic depends on factors such as the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic properties of the drug, prior treatments, routes of administration, predisposing conditions, the suspected cause of the abscess, and the microorganism involved. Broad-spectrum antibiotics are typically used for six to eight weeks, with adjustments made based on microbiological findings. Immunosuppressed patients often receive third-generation cephalosporins, such as ceftriaxone or cefotaxime. If pseudomonas infection is suspected, fourth-generation cephalosporins like cefepime are used, often in combination with metronidazole or vancomycin. For fungal infections, particularly those caused by aspergillus, voriconazole is recommended. In cases of Toxoplasma gondii infection, voriconazole is combined with pyrimethamine and sulfadiazine. Surgical intervention allows for microbiological characterization and reduction of abscess size. Open surgery is typically reserved for lesions 2.5 centimeters or larger, midline shifts of 5 millimeters or greater, proximity to the ventricular system, or brain herniation. Complete surgical removal may be considered for superficial abscesses not involving critical brain functions, suspected fungal or mycobacterial infections, abscesses with multiple cavities, or those caused by congenital or acquired fistulas. Stereotactic aspiration is increasingly used for abscess drainage, particularly for lesions in deep or critical brain areas. This minimally invasive technique allows for microbiological and histopathological studies. For patients with multiple small abscesses, the largest lesion is typically drained first, with additional drainage performed if there is significant edema, clinical deterioration, or insufficient response to antibiotics. Follow-up imaging, typically with CT scans, should be performed at least weekly, with frequency adjusted based on the patient's clinical status. High serum C-reactive protein levels after treatment may indicate treatment failure, necessitating further intervention. Conclusion Brain abscesses are a serious condition requiring prompt diagnosis and treatment. Management typically involves a combination of surgical intervention and antibiotic therapy, tailored to the individual patient's circumstances. Close follow-up is necessary to monitor for improvement and to identify any complications that may arise during the course of treatment. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.